Hey, it's Sean Renee, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how I embroider these bath towels with matching washcloths, mistakes and all. Stay tuned. I'm using Sew It Pro to pull my fonts in. I don't use the BX for the fonts. I just pull them in and pick them out one by one. It works for me. Um, I know that there are easier ways to do, th do things, but this is the way I initially learned. And so I just kind of stick to it. I always pull the first one, the first letter in, and then I have to go through and search to make sure that I'm in the same size range because it doesn't always tell you what size letter you're looking at when you have four and five different size fonts all bunched in together. They'll be separated as far as sections are concerned. Like these are all the two inch fonts in this section here and these are another size up in here but there's nothing to say that hey these are the two inches right here so i pull the first one in knowing what size i'm getting and then when i get to this here panel after i hit that icov i think that's what it says um this bar opens up or this panel opens up and then i pull the same letter again just to be sure that i do have the correct size then I delete it. I know I'm in the right place and I'll go through and pull in the rest of my letters. So I'm going to spell her name right this time. And I'm going to get them all lined up. So in lining them up is not very difficult. This is actually why I got so wet pro so that I would be able to line them up because I actually see I, I could only assume that they are newer as far as embroidery people are concerned that they'll actually be selling items where the, the script letters are close, but they're not lined up. And maybe I'm just old, but I don't want to get something where if that Y and J can be connected, uh, that J and H can be connected, I want them to be connected. I don't want to buy something where they're not connected. To me, that's not script, okay? I graduated, went to school, you know, during an era where we actually learned to write in cursive and you had to do it correctly spelling names is just not my strong point right now so here I do have it lined up I always want to bring it to where it's centered and that little mark right there once all of the letters are highlighted will show that this is the center of that design so I'm bringing it to be center it won't be center in the whole middle meaning these points will not be on the center line because this is going to be stitched out onto a tile and I'm going to actually keep it low so I, so that there's less of a chance of it being too high up on the towel. I'll pretty much know exactly where it's going to stitch out. So it's centered exactly where I want it and it's not overlapping on the hoop. So it's not, it's going to be fine. Now I don't want seven or yeah, I don't want seven different stops. This is all one color. So I'm going to go up here to edit. I'm going to click join threads. I'm going to join all threads of the same color. Okay. And now I have one color stitch and this whole 6,389 stitches will be stitched out at one time, one color. So I'll just let that run and that will be that. Now I'm going to save this and I'm actually going to save this up here on my main flash drive so that I will have it for future uses so that I'm not misspelling her name again. That's kind of embarrassing. And I'm gonna put what font I'm using just for my own personal references. I'm gonna hit save. And now that's saved on my main flash drive. I'm gonna go and get the flash drive that I actually use in my embroidery machine Today I'm going to be using the Innovis IS VE2200, which is also called the Brother Dream Maker. The max hoop size, if you have the expansion kit, 
is a eight by 12 hoop. However, I did not buy the expansion kit when I bought this machine. So my max hoop size is seven by 12. Okay. And I guess I better plug this into the right place. Okay, so I've got my other flash drive in. I'm gonna click File, Save As. Do, 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 do. What are we saving this as? It's gonna, I'm gonna keep it the same name. I'm just gonna put it in a different spot. That's the flash drive I'm gonna save it on. It's now saved. And I'm gonna take this flash drive to my machine so it can be stitched out. Okay, so we're at the table and we're gonna get our towel hooped. Well, the way I hoop it, I actually float. If you have watched my previous videos, I'm gonna use Tearaway, which is that paper type stabilizer. And I tend to buy my Tearaway stabilizer from All Stitch because I can get a good amount for the price. And usually if you have a certain amount, as far as purchase price, you get free shipping. And so I'm gonna hoop my stabilizer, cut it off here. And I do have, I've seen some people actually leave this attached and then they just trim it to save even more. I'm not gonna do all of that. <laughs> Although I do like to save a penny. <clears throat> Now I've got my stabilizer hooped. I'm gonna tighten up the hoop just to make sure it is as tight as I can get it. And I've always been told that if you hear a drum type sound, it's tight enough. And I don't think that that is that drum type sound that I need. So let me just work with it a little more just to get it good and tight because that will affect the quality of your stitch. That's good. Now I've got these towels from Target and they are the room essential brands, but you know, you can always go up in quality or down in quality, depending on what, you know, your use is. If you're going to be selling them or giving them as gifts, I wouldn't go any lower than this particular brand, which is the room essentials. Now to find my center point, I fold the towel lengthwise so that I can find the uh, center. And so this is the center and I wanna make sure that I'm lining it up and placing it on the center of my hoop. These little points actually mark, they're like little nodules or nubs or whatever you call them. Let me pull it up closer. These little marks right here in your hoop, they actually mark the center. So this is the center here the center here. And if you were to draw a line going up and down and then across, you would have a point dead center in the middle of your hoop, okay, on your stabilizer. So I wanna make sure that I am lining it up. I'm gonna take that center mark, place it right here. And I'm just gonna hold it in place as I open it up. And actually I want this to not be in the embroidery area. So I'm gonna go just a little bit beyond that, okay? Got some lint here. So I'm gonna take it just beyond that so that that little band, that there is no chance that that's gonna get stitched because I don't want that to be stitched. I want the design to be down low, but not that low, okay? And let's see here, I'm gonna just pin this in place here. And before I go pinning the rest of it, I do wanna just do a quick look over just to make sure it does look centered still and to make sure everything else is gonna be lined up correctly, okay? And so it looks good to me. I'm gonna use some water soluble stabilizer that I also buy from All Stitch, <laughs> and I'm gonna put it on top, Let's see here. I'm gonna put this on top and I'm just measuring to make sure I have enough covering that whole hoop area. You can hear this bag. I keep my water soluble stabilizer inside a bag so that it doesn't dry out. 
I actually had that happen one time. <laughs> I'm like, okay, well, a bag it is. But now I've got that cut out and I'm gonna just pin this on top of the towel so that it doesn't get caught on the little loops from the terry cloth that the towel is made out of. And it'll also keep all of those stitches from sinking down inside the towel so that the stitches will be on top of the towel and you'll actually see them. It'll look the way you want it to look. And so I'm just going around and I'm pinning everything in place. Once again, this is a six by 10 hoop. I'm saying once again, I'm not sure if I told you that before or not, but this is the six by 10 hoop and I have a seven by 12, but I do not need that. I mean, I probably could go bigger if I wanted to, but for this, I, I don't want it to be an overbearing design. And so I'm just gonna keep pinning this around just to make sure the stabilizer is nice and taut on top, but also be, be sure to not tear through that bottom stabilizer either because that is your tear away on the bottom, okay? And I try to pin it in as many points as possible just to be sure that it will be nice and taut and that there's no chance that the needle's gonna get caught up. Like if this were to go down too low, you don't want it to flip down here and then your needle get caught up in it and then you're gonna be all messed up and starting over again with a whole new towel because although they sell devices to take embroidery out, it never looks as good. So you'd really be buying another towel or stitching another towel. You'd have this one gone to waste. Okay. So I know that it's going to stitch in this area here. I think that is good for pinning. So I have my stabilizer hooped and my towel is floating. And then on top of the towel, I have my... I, it's a water soluble stabilizer. Some people call it a drape or a cover, but or a topper, but it's just a water soluble stabilizer. And that will keep the stitches from sinking down into the terry cloth. And it will also keep your needle from getting caught up on the little loops from the uh, terry cloth. Okay. So now we're going to go to the machine and get this stitched out. Okay, so we are at the embroidery machine and it's been a little while since I've actually stitched anything out. It's actually been a few days. I've got my bobbin thread wound up and I do rewind my own bobbins. I use Embroiderex embroidery bobbin thread. Well, I don't know if it's embroidery bobbin thread, but it's Embroiderex bobbin thread. Um, the last time I bought it on Amazon, I got like two of the 5,500 yard cones which is what one of these is it's a 5500 cone for $14.99 for two of these so that's what I've been using and I've not had a problem with it I use the plastic bobbins in this machine I initially learned to sew and everything using the old metal ones and this is a drop in in case you didn't see that you have to make sure that the thread is going the correct uh, direction and the directions are pretty much on all of these brother machines. Brother machines have been very user friendly for me. So I truly appreciate those. And then I'm going to thread the top thread. I'm going to use this. This is actually by Coats and it's a polyester thread. Um, a lot of people don't like Coats, but I've not had a problem with them. And this is truly the only brand of embroidery thread that I've used for the tops. So... This is a radiant blue and I'm just going to make sure the pressure foot is up, which with this machine, you cannot thread it if the pressure machine is not up and it's got a nice auto threader on it that once you have everything set up, you push the button, it pulls the thread through and you're ready to go. So sometimes looks like that's a little shredded there huh okay i don't like the way that looks so what i am going to do is clip that 
take it out and I'm probably gonna change my needle just to be sure that everything is going the way it should be going. Yeah, that's not cool. Let's see here. And now as far as needles are concerned, I do use a 7511 for most things. And I buy the Oregon needles from All Stitch. <laughs> they are my to-go-to people. And so this is just a regular straight 7511. So let me get down here, change this needle real quick. I did not plan on having it be in a needle changing tutorial. Lower that just to give my fingers some space so that I can get that in there. Then I'll tighten it by hand a minute, but then I wanna use the screwdriver and go through and tighten it just to be sure that it doesn't get loose. And always make sure you throw your old needle away. <laughs> I will do that in just a moment. So I'm gonna go through again and I do use a cone holder and I make sure that the cone holder is away from that turn handle because you don't wanna get thread caught up in there. I've read many times where people are sewing or doing embroidery and they've got the thread too close to the cone, uh, um, too close to the hand wheel and the thread gets caught up in there and they're like, well, what the heck now? Yeah, you're off to the shop. So. I've got it threaded. Now the thread looks good. It, nothing's shredding or anything here. So that's good. Now I'm gonna throw this away, get my towel, which is already hooped and get to stitching. This particular machine will not stitch. It won't operate as far as the embroidery function is concerned if the little switch is not down that closes the hoop in. So that is one thing I do like. Did I get this caught? Jeez, my nitney. Alrighty, yeah, I did. Let's see if that messed it up too bad. Okay, so that's where it got, it dragged it a little bit. But you know what, um, when I get finished, I'll tie it off in a small knot and clip it, it'll be fine. So this is hooped, it's clamped in, down will allow the machine to function, okay? So, oh, here's what I forgot to do. Go to your embroidery function, the flash drive is in, so you're gonna hit the USB thing and find the design that you're gonna stitch. I'm gonna stitch her name out Sometimes with this particular machine, it will allow you to select embroidery and then rotate if it's not going in the right direction. Sometimes it will not. So I've got to take it out of the hoop so that it's not going to do it. Let's see here. Let's move that. There is a point in where... Huh. Nope. Okay. Okay, so because of the size of the design, I actually took it back to the computer and I am going to literally flip it so that it is on the opposite end of the, the uh, hoop the way I need it to be. So there is a function here in Sew Up Pro that will allow you to rotate. Uh, this one is reflect. That's the mirror at top and bottom. You don't want to mirror it. You want to rotate it. Okay. So I'm going to rotate it until it's where I need it to be. It'll stay centered because it's been centered, but as you drag it down, it will move it a little bit. So now I've got this rotated and centered where I need it to be so that it will stitch in the right direction. I'm going to go back and I'm going to save it to this PC and I'm gonna just, oh, let's put it in the right flash drive thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna save it here and I'm gonna just save it the same way I'm gonna replace it so that it does save it the way I need it to be saved. So now it should be ready to stitch out. Let's go to the machine again. Okay, I'm gonna put the hoop back in. 
make sure that it is uh, clamped down and everything is smooth nothing is in the way I'm gonna put my flash drive back in over here give it a few minutes so that once the uh, thing stops lighting that light stops then you'll know you'll be able to read it sometimes I'll put the flash drive in and I'll hit the USB thing and it won't show anything but after a few moments it will pull it back up so I'm going to get my design again that is the name that I want it's facing the direction I want I'm going to select embroidery and it's saying that it's going to be about 18 minutes for it to stitch I'm not going to have you sit here and watch this stitch out although for me it is kind of soothing I'm going to lower that down I'm going to clip some of this string off, some of this thread off, because I don't want it to end up bunching up on itself. And I'll just let it start stitching, okay? Whew, that was a challenge. Because I wasn't planning on the fact that the size would prohibit me to be able to actually turn it. And it does happen, um, probably more often than you think. But don't, don't let little things like that discourage you, okay? Embroidery is not for everybody. It's not the easiest thing. A lot of people think that, oh, you just line some letters up and put the fabric or whatever on the machine and press go. It takes a lot more than that. And you do run into little nuances like that that make it a little bit difficult at times, but just don't let it discourage you. And when you first get started, to be honest with you, embroidering on towels is probably the easiest thing that you can do. And to be honest, the turnover as far as, you know, the earning potential, you can make a, a nice amount of money just embroidering towels. If you never get into hats, patches or anything else, if you find, you know, your little niche in towels, there are people who do funny towels with different sayings on them there are people who do holiday towels you can find your lane in embroidery and and make your money okay so don't let things discourage you like some people i know there are people who are out there who have multi-needle machines and they're making all kinds of stuff on their machines you know stitching hats and jackets and doing full vests and everything yeah um you'll get there but take it one step at a time, okay? One step at a time, one machine upgrade at a time if you have to, because that's literally what I've been doing. I started with the SC425, which is that sewing machine combo. <laughs> and I got it right off the shelf at Walmart when I just decided, hey, I'm gonna try to figure out how to do some, some machine embroidery. Got that machine and it's limiting because it only has a four by four hoop but I ended up upgrading to a bigger machine. I got the, I got a used Innovis uh, 1250D was the, the first bigger hoop machine that I got. And it had a max hoop size of six by 10. That ran really good until one Christmas I was stitching out towels and pot holder sets. And I literally, my machine just stopped and I was literally stuck with like, 10 12 orders that needed to be done so i had to go online figure out where i would be able to get an embroidery machine from fast so i could get these orders done and i only needed a five by seven frame so i got the pe770 that thing was a lifesaver because i ordered it online from ken sewing which is in alabama and i'm in georgia and I got it within two days. So my orders were not late. I was up and running. And then that same weekend after I got that P770, I took my other machine to the shop and they explained to me that, you know, because of the age of the machine, they repaired it, but they advised that I do start looking into another newer machine. And so that same day I ended up coming home with this Dreammaker XC. Uh, have not had a problem with it although i do still have the 1250d it's just resting right now i will pull her out in case of an emergency but not very often 
So yeah, I really like this color blue against the yellow. And I hope that she likes it as well. Um, these are for my nieces. Actually, I have two nieces that I've got towels that I'm going to be stitching. And I'm going to do them slightly different, but they're only two years apart. So hopefully they'll both like them. And there are different types of water soluble stabilizers that um, people use, but each water soluble stabilizer has a different use, okay? There is a product called Valine, which I use when I make patches, and I will do a video soon of how I do patches, but I use Valine, Vi Valine, however you wanna pronounce it. And it's a water soluble stabilizer, but it's sturdier and you don't want to use that on top of a towel because this is good. This water soluble, which is solvy, it's good on top of towels because you could literally pick it away and not have to do so much wash away with it. I don't like to run my products under water before the customer actually gets it, even though this here particular set is going to be for a gift. I, I still, I don't want to take away the newness of the towels or anything that I'm going to be stitching. So I'll just let that stitch out and I will come back when it is all done. Alrighty, so 18 minutes later, give or take, it is all stitched out. I'm going to be careful not to snag it coming out, but here is the almost finished result and I say that because I still have to unhoop it um, and I've got to clean up all of this water soluble stabilizer but when I say that you know it pulls away easily this is what I mean you can literally just stick your finger in and peel it away and what doesn't come up that is actually visible when you are done peeling it all away you can take a q-tip a wet q-tip with some warm water and just dab around the parts that it actually still uh shows the stabilizer but with this particular design i will not have any of that showing because there aren't any real small crevices for any of the um solvy to be caught in so i'm literally just going to unpin it and i'm going to clean it up okay so i've got all the water soluble stabilizer cleaned off of it and i've picked the tearaway stabilizer from the back so it's almost ready to be folded up and uh, collected with the rest of her set. But remember that one place that I told you it snagged? Oh, where is that spot at? Right here. It got caught in the needle. What I'm gonna do with this, I'm gonna tie it off in a knot and I hope that you can see this. Let's see here. Let me come over on this side so you can see it. Okay, maybe <laughs> I'm going to tie it off in a knot here and get this knot down as close to the tie as possible without pulling it any further and just pull it off. I had plans on cutting it, but it pulled, so that works too. And now my towel is ready to be fluffed up and folded and I'll put it with the rest of her sets that I'm doing. Alrighty, and here is the finished product or are the finished products. I just put their first initial on each washcloth and I did use some alternating colors so that they're not, none of them are stitched in the same color. I love this blue on top of the yellow, but what surprised me, I actually like this pink. It's a piece of lint, gotta always check for lint. The pink on top of the yellow is pretty as well. So it's just a bath towel and a matching washcloth and their gifts are good to go. Alrighty, so I am all done with these towels. They're embroidered and I'm gonna package them up and I'll get them shipped off. I hope that you enjoyed the video.